After many years living in Canada and living in British Columbia, we realized that we hadn't explored much of this country, which is so famous for its snowy mountains and teal blue lakes. As the city of Chilliwack, where we spent a lot of our time, was under a flood alert, we decided it was time to go. So we prepared a little home, Vanilda. We love this fridge. The only problem is that... Oh, Stop exactly. Ready for the long journey to Alberta, which would take us a few days and a few stops along the way to finally visit the famous Lake Louise and its turquoise blue waters. The trip to Alberta is beautiful. <laughs> and we know you're gonna be as fascinated as we were. Today we woke up and we left the place where we were and we tried to escape what could be a flood. Well, we don't know if the flood will really happen. If it does, it will be really sad. There is a warning issued for the Fraser Valley. So we were region. camping in the Fraser Valley. In the Fraser Valley. Government officials say they are planning for the possibility of a catastrophic break. A landslide in the Farwell Canyon has the Chilcotin River completely blocked. Behind the slide, a new lake has formed, which is growing by the second, and there's concern how long the dam can hold. The risk is imminent, and that is why the evacuation order has been put in place downstream of the dam. An emergency alert sent out Wednesday asked people and boaters to immediately leave areas on the river or along the banks of the Chilcotin and down the Fraser River to Hope. So we are out on the Fraser Valley. We are okay. past Hope. We're driving up the Coquihalla Highway. So there are like mountains up and downhills and uphills. And we're currently at about 3,500 feet. And it is a beautiful view. And we are heading towards Merritt, Kamloops, and then Salmon, Salmon Arm. Arm. That will be our final destination for today. If everything goes well, maybe Banff. At some point, maybe. At some point. Because we knew we were going to drive on the Coquihalla. Coquihalla kind of goes up and down. We wanted to check our brakes, so we took the van yesterday to oh, yeah. Tire. And boy, what a service. And just as well, we took it. Basically, our two back wheels were welded onto the rims because we had never taken off the back tires. And they had to take a massive, massive rubber ham hammer and yeah. try to knock off those back wheels. It's a good thing we didn't get stuck on the side of the road with a flat. Plus they rotated all the tires, which was good. I felt quite bad because they didn't charge a penny. Yeah, they gave it to all to us for free. We're going down the hill now. We're descending into that little town of Merritt. We're currently at about 3,000 feet and I'm gearing down so as not to use the brakes. You can rarely overheat your brakes if you if you keep your foot on the pedal. It's always try to pump a little downtown area, it seems. Very There's sweet. an Indian, Greek and Italian restaurant. How does that three work? In one. How does that work? Gifts. That would be really to try. Black's Pharmacy. Hanago Pizza. Hanago Pizza is everywhere. Vision Optical and Native Art Gifts. Oh, and look here on that right. How much at is that. it to, to stay here? Wow. What is this? this? So it's a pub. It's a pub. It, it, oh, is it's it a, a pub. Hotel? I don't know if it's a hotel. It looks like a hotel, but it's probably a pub now. Huh. It's so cool. And there's Old Barley Market on your right. You guys can already guess probably that we like old towns. We like history. We like things. Little church. Time. It even has the bell in. Look at the bell. So cool. There's another church here. Yeah. This one does not have a bell. It's so pretty. It's, what a sweet town. And then I some houses. Here. It's funny, a little town in the Canadian wilderness. There is a square. Quite pretty, the city center. Garcia Street, that's, that's Spanish, right? One of the beautiful things here is that 
<laughs> you can still see the mountains in the background of this little town. So fun. Let's go. Let's head on towards Kamloops. Kamloops, the next place we're driving through now. Wow, that is expensive. Fuel is 180.9 per liter here. Much more expensive than other places. Oh well, we came to Costco to do our shopping, and but it's I'm closed. Kidding. Yeah, so sad. It's maybe we can use fuel at the Costco gasoline. Maybe we can get some fuel. Let's see if we can. Yeah, it's sad that cheaper. it's closed. It's Sunday, and we forgot that Costco closes earlier on Sunday. Six. It closes at six. We arrived here at eight past six. Isn't that nice? This is the closest Costco to Salmon Arm, which is about one hour and 22 minutes away. Do you want to be in for a shock? Go for it. So we filled up before we got here from Chilliwack to Kamloops. This is cheap, cheap fuel compared to what we paid at Chilliwack. A few cents cheaper. Three cents cheaper. $53.44. Yeah. Canadian gas prices are expensive. There is a van from Quebec. Van lifers are funny. You normal people from houses see big cars like buses and vans and you name it and you think wow that's a big car, that's a big vehicle. For us it's like it's livable, does someone live there? So many people like us traveling through. Yep, traveling through and Costco is a good place to stop if it was open in time. Well, it was we opening this, time. We, we didn't get here in time. <laughs> you may be noticing a commonality here, guys. What is the commonality? About us arriving later places. It's it's a sad reality in our lives, yeah. update on the flood. Although the water levels went down and the destruction wasn't as big as compared to a few years ago, the debris brought by the water still causes big concern, as you can see on the news. And while the worst case scenario did not materialize, danger still exists from the debris flowing downstream. You can see the debris starting to flow from the Chocotan into the Fraser River on Monday and make its way downstream. That's the uh, Chocotan River. Come through the canyon, that's where it joins the uh, Fraser River. This was the scene by Tuesday with sediment following. In Lytton, logs were scattered across the river. Where they'll end up is the big concern. Slopes remain unstable, boat launches are closed, and some campsites under evacuation. Further down the Fraser River, communities are taking precautions. New Westminster shut down its boardwalk and in hope signs are warning people not to enter due to the flood watch. Water levels are not expected to be as high further downstream but there is concern the push of the water will bring with it debris. The natural dam created from the landslide is decreasing two and a half meters an hour. The worst case scenario still appears to have decreased drastically. Fast forward a few days later I'm still wearing the same top. <laughs> we came to this campground in Salmon Arm it's quite simple, but it's very good. But we are going to show you guys tomorrow because now we are rushing to a lake. It's been really hot and we want to go for a swim. Tomorrow is also moving day. So we have today to enjoy the lake. Let's we, go. Let's hope we catch some of the sunset. A little late. <laughs> Beach, and you walk under this tunnel. It's so dark. Up here is a railway. Beautiful lake, it's massive, surrounded by mountains, really pretty. And the railway is right up there. They put this here probably so that people can walk back without dirtying their feet. Wow, this is so gorgeous. I hope the water isn't too cold. Hey, 
enjoying the water. Today's moving day. We don't quite know where we go next, but I want to show you guys this campground where we stayed for a few days. So here's our van. This is one of the best spots because it's very covered and we don't need Starlink because the park has very good Wi-Fi. There is a baseball field right here. Other camping spots on the other side. These are the washrooms. Right on the other side is where the showers are. There are some books right here. I guess people just come and exchange books. Quite a nice, simple campground. There isn't much to it, but it's very quiet and we really like it. We try how to Banff. We don't quite know if we will make it because it seems like everything is booked. There might be one place where we'll be able to squeeze in more than four hours drive. We might stop on the way, we might not. We might even sleep on a Walmart parking lot, we'll see. Wow, that chateau by the lake was something else. Initially I thought, no, that can't be a supermarket. It's too pretty for that. <laughs> it was pretty impressive, I must say. We out of Salmon Arm. Yeah, small little town. One thing that's very interesting about this town is that Salmon Arm is built around the lake. A huge lake, that lake we showed you guys. Sus what's Chaswap, Chaswap. Chaswap. Chaswap Lake. It's huge. It's so, a pretty laid back town, I would say. There's not much population in these areas. No. But property prices are still very expensive. 600 or 700,000 Canadian dollars. Something like that, yeah. For biggish for, houses. This is not in, near any big cities. No, but that's roughly what you pay for an apartment in Vancouver. The next town that we're gonna head to is called Revelstoke. This trip is getting prettier and prettier. Wow, look it's at like, these lakes. Look at, here. look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Wow, the river is blue. Wow. Do you think it's because we're getting closer to Banff? So many of us. We got fuel in and Steven did a great job in cleaning the window so now we can film better for you guys. We are starting to see some snow caps. This is how high we are. It's still around Revelstoke, I think, outside Revelstoke. And I know that most of the year we see lots of snow on mountains here in Canada, but as we reach Alberta, it, it, the mountains feel a little different. I believe this year is called Mountain Revelstoke. That's why the name of the place is Revelstoke. As we drive through the mountains, it starts to get rainy. I wonder if it's gonna be rainy there too in Banff. Let's see. And we've hit 3,000 feet. Quite fun having an altimeter because you can see how high you are. Yeah, we're heading up the mountains. 
we are coming up on what looks like massive granite peaks. Are these the Canadian Rockies? I, I believe so. I think this is the start of the Rockies. Boy, are these mountains majestic and massive. I generally don't like putting much expectation on things, so I try to keep it low. But once we started seeing the Rocky Mountains, oh my goodness, I want to cry. It's so beautiful. I, I'm getting more and more excited. <laughs> these massive mountains remind me a little bit of South Africa. Oh yeah, big with the time. the grandeur of South Africa, the, the the large mountains and the yes. nature and yeah this is the very first time we leave British Columbia after so many years in Canada British Columbia bye bye for the very first time apart from when, when we, we flew. flew through Toronto that's different of course we have left Canada visited other places you know but in Canada we haven't traveled much is that a glacier on the top of the mountain I think it might be oh, coming down the mountain I don't know I think that might be a glacier up there now I do want very possible very possible and look at that kind of waterfall coming down the mountain this is exquisite guys Where can you see the so look at that waterfall coming down the mountain Oh, is that Below a the glacier. Yeah, that's kind of like a waterfall oh, or a river. Oh my word, that's so beautiful. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it looks like a painting in the distance, like a backdrop to a movie set. Oh, I'm getting very excited. <laughs> There's a height limit in these tunnels, but it's kind of like a highway. How are people supposed to turn around just before the tunnel? If you look down there, that RV down there is not too far from the top of the tunnel. It's rock. That is snow. Guys, what do you think that is? Is that snow or is that rock? It's rock because if it was snow, it would be, it would be white. It's gray. That is Whoa. snow. That and is snow. There's just a lot of smoke in front of it and haze. <laughs> but there is some snow. Oh, there's a mountain goat, yeah? Did you oh, see wow. it? Wow! Finally! Finally a mountain goat! I had started to believe that they were not real because a lot of people spoke about them, but we never saw one. That changes things. I'm now believing they exist. <laughs> That's some big horns. I think they pull oh, what big horn? Sheep big, something Big like horn, that. yeah. There is a little bit of snow. I was largely wrong. Like most of it's, by largely, he most means of it's all not the gray. Snow. All the gray means he's largely wrong. But there is a bit of snow left up there, if you can see. So don't worry, Javi. What probably happened is that it melted from a few minutes ago. Miracles happen. <laughs> <laughs> It seems like it's not just Lake Louise that's turquoise. We drove past a few creeks, rivers, lakes that are quite blue. Yeah, so we're 14 kilometers roughly away from Lake Louise at the moment. So maybe that's why they're very blue. It's in the area, maybe.
You guys can see these tunnels and we saw a few of them now. And they have like a garden on the top. We saw the animals can, can walk softly. Walk softly. Speaking of animals, we haven't seen much. We haven't seen a bear. We haven't seen a moose. Bear, 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 bear. There's bear. a bear. There's oh! a bear. <laughs> <laughs> we, we finally, go. finally, the very first time we saw a bear, it was a little baby and it was so fast and we couldn't even film. And this time this beauty was parading on the side of the road and it was so beautiful. But, but, maybe 30 seconds before I'd seen someone rollerblading oh, along the, along the right. side of the highway. He and then, and then probably the maybe 15, 30 seconds later, I saw this bear running along. So maybe the bear had caught a whiff of the rollerblader. <laughs> <laughs> setting and we are trying to find a camp spot. We have two options we think. We came outside of Canmore and there is Rafters Six Ranch which I think they charge 29 per night mm -hmm. and we drove up there and it's a big field and it's a pretty field with view of the mountains. We saw a sign on the way here which suggests you can camp for one night so We'll probably go check that out as well and then make a decision. Before the sun sets completely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're going back to the ranch because it's closed. The gate's yeah. closed. <laughs> the sign says camp for a day, but it's closed. If you like this video, please give us your thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the notifications bell so you guys know when we put up new videos. We are also on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Keep well. God bless. And bye-bye.